So this gospel is uh, fascinating because we usually, I think in the other two years, we, we get the, I'm the good shepherd. And uh, that's the one that kind of, I think most of us are very familiar with, the image of Jesus as the good shepherd who, who leads the sheep out. And, but immediately preceding that is this image where Jesus gives this story that makes it sound like he's going to say, I am the shepherd or I'm the gatekeeper to clarify this confusing image to the apostles. And instead, Jesus clarifies by saying, oh, yeah, yeah. And that, and that's, in this story, I'm the gate. It's confusing that Jesus would describe himself as the inanimate object through which people go as opposed to the gatekeeper or the shepherd or one of the other living things. It's fascinating. One of the things that uh, Jesus does throughout his ministry that I think we underestimate how radical it is, is a lot of the challenges that Jesus gives in the temple and about the temple. And there's something amazing and wonderful about Jesus as the gate that we need to take very seriously because I think this is an image that continues to be alive for us and be very powerful for us, especially as people who are in church right now. So we have to, I want to start this sermon by going back to what would have been going on in this gospel at this time. Jesus is giving this image in the temple. He's been just reprimanded by the Pharisees because just before the story, he had cured uh, someone of blindness. And it actually created a huge amount of controversy. We, we read that the gospel story maybe about three or four weeks ago, and it's a really, really long story. He cured the man of blindness on the Sabbath, and he freaked everybody out. He did it really close, if not in the temple. And there was a lot of people that were upset that he did work on the Sabbath, because in the Bible it says if you do work on the Sabbath, you should be executed. It's a big deal to do work on the Sabbath. Jesus did this miracle. If he did, if he did work on the Sabbath, that means God did work on the Sabbath. But God doesn't do that. Therefore, maybe Jesus is possessed by a demon. That would explain how something magical could happen on the Sabbath. And they go back and forth and back and forth. Because why would a demon cure somebody of blindness? No demon's ever done that, right? Big debate. And so all of this debate culminates in this story where Jesus suddenly gives this bizarre image about a sheepfold and a gate and how there are thieves that come in and out of the gate, but they're not really coming by the gate. They're coming through another way. And the sheep don't really trust them. And really, they're thieves and bandits, and there have been thieves and bandits that have been going in and out for a while, but the shepherd has never come in, and now there's the shepherd, the shepherd can lead them out of the gate. And if you heard that story at this time and in that context, Jesus seems to be saying the Pharisees and priests and teachers and leaders in the temple are the thieves and the bandits who have been sneaking into the house of God and have been trying to get the sheep to follow them, but the sheep aren't listening to them because they know that they're thieves and bandits and they won't hear their voice. But Jesus is the shepherd, and in this case, he is the gate. So this is where things get really radical because what Jesus seems to be saying in this moment is he also says that he's the temple, that he is the way and the truth and the life in John, what he seems to be saying is, there are all these sheep and they're in the temple. I am the gate and I am the shepherd and I'm going to lead the sheep out of the temple into freedom where they'll be out in the world doing sheep things. They're no longer in a pen. They're out. They're living. I am life, right? They're out. They're alive. There's grass. There's plants. There's water. There's mountains. There's all these wonders of the world that the sheep have been afraid of because the temple or the gate is safe and secure. But now you can be out in the world, but you're safe because there's a shepherd. I am the good shepherd, says Jesus. And Jesus is with them. So you can now be out in the world. You don't have to be confined to this gate. You can be out in the world, but I am with you. And you're safe and you're secure because you can hear my voice and I love you and I'll always search for you. 
we're very familiar. This is one of the oldest, I think this is the oldest image that we have for Jesus, is Jesus as the shepherd. Um, we almost take it for granted, but think about how radical that is for Jesus to be giving them this image in the temple. He's saying, you don't have to keep going back to the temple to find God, to be with God. In fact, God is leading you out of the temple into the world, but you're safe because God loves you. It's radical, right? And this, this, of course, culminates in, in Pentecost with the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and to be honest, there, there were a lot of Christians at this time, and there have been a lot of Christians throughout the ages who have stuck with this image and this way very specifically. And what makes Christianity so confusing and so fascinating is we also have the very same lectionary set for today. If you look at the Acts one, we have the apostles who have just witnessed the resurrected Lord, and they're constantly in the temple praising God. So here's why it's so fascinating and amazing to be a Christian today. I feel like we've embraced both, where we've truly embraced the image of Jesus as the gate. I feel like in some ways, churches, like faith communities such as ours, embrace the very best things about something like the temple. The temple was a sacred place. The temple was secure and safe. The temple was a place where you knew you could talk about God, especially in a world where maybe a lot of other people didn't necessarily want to talk about the God of the people of Israel, right? They wanted to talk about gods, plural, that was way more common, like the emperor and all the other gods. It was a place where you could talk about the God of the people of Israel. You could worship, and everybody knew the words to worship. Everybody knew how to worship. You could talk, uh, you could have uh, godly moments. You could pray together, and it was a sacred space that was set aside for prayer and thanksgiving. I feel like the church returned to that image. There were some Christians saying, we don't need a temple at all anymore. We can just, I can just go out in the world, and God is going to be with me. But what I think happened was, we as a church embraced both. So we have this temple, and then there's a gate. There's a door. A lot of us come to church to get revitalized, recharged, re-equipped to be Christians in the world. And then we go back out. And we go out with the Good Shepherd, with Jesus, who leads us out into a very complex and confusing world filled with all kinds of challenges. But we know that God is with us, and God hears our voice, and we hear the voice of the shepherd, and we, God leads us on our very peculiar and specific journeys that we are each called to live. And where at one time in the ancient world, the temple was sacred and the world was profane, the temple was a place where God was, and your, your family life and your work life was a place where God wasn't. And you had to go to the temple if you wanted to talk to God, and the priests uh, would intercede for you. Now we live in a world where God journeys with us as we leave this place in prayer and in solitude in our families. On a day like Mother's Day, there's a lot of people who find sacred moments in family, in friendships. And Christians have found that when they leave the temple, when we leave this place, we do not leave God behind, but God journeys with us. So our lives can, if we invite God in, our lives can become holy, that we can find sacred moments and sacred spaces outside of this place, that God wants to be in the world God wants to be in our lives. God wants to be a part of who we are. God is constantly inviting us to become Christ-like. God is living in us. So I invite you on this probably the most beautiful day we've had in 2014 to allow God to journey with you out of this place. 
for the sacred moments that you feel to not just be confined to the temple, although we know that we can pray here and experience holy moments here, but invite God to journey with you as the Good Shepherd out of this place and into your lives and into your hearts and into your families. Amen.